Good morning, good evening, and wherever the sun may find you. My name is Walt, and this is Coffee and Concepts on Keystroke Medium. And I am so excited because I am not alone again for another week. Uh, I, sometimes I feel weird talking to myself, uh, you know, right into the camera. Granted, there are, you know, the the legions of fans who are, you know, trying to get caffeinated this early in the morning, but, you know, I'll, I'll take what I can get. Well, today we have Mr. Patty Finn. How are you, sir? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Um, under caffeinated, maybe overwhelmed. We'll see how this works out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, uh, let's see. It is twelve thirty in the afternoon where you is, um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, still drinking coffee since the wee early hours. Or still drinking. This is my third <laughs> cup. So I, I was. I normally have my third cup by now, but I was saving this one. So <laughs> <laughs> right on. What uh, what kind of coffee are you drinking? It's just. Um, I can't actually remember what this one's called. It's, we, we have like a bunch on bulk order from Amazon, kind of just that keeps us going in case we run out of stuff. And we ran out of stuff. So it's some sort of um, Arabica bean, I think. Um, so yeah, it does the job. That's the important thing. Medium roast, slightly acidic. Um, it's, the stuff we get is medium roast, but I always keep like a bag of dark roast uh, um, knocking around and just fire it all in and just beef it up a bit. The thing is, Matt, my mother-in-law and I, um, she she lives on the property as well. She comes in uh -huh. and steals my coffee, and she <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like it too dark, and I don't like it not dark enough. So um, we we kind of make a compromise. Do you ever put something? You know, I, I, I hate to sound you know presumptuous, but do you ever put any Irish in it? Oh yeah, of course I do, <laughs> all the time. Um, in what's fact, the preferred brought, What's the preferred method? I would normally just put some, if it was uh, an Irish whiskey, maybe some Bushmills, um, just the run of the little stuff. I wouldn't use the good stuff in, in the coffee. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe just some cream. Um, sometimes you put a bit of um, Irish cream in there instead, uh, just to spice things up a bit. Right on, right on. I, uh, I have a friend who comes over all the time, and he's he insists on having, on having the good stuff in his coffee. So uh, we... We keep some in the freezer, and then he uh, he likes he likes it when you know the extremely cold coffee hits the the uh, excuse me the extremely cold liquor hits the extremely hot coffee. He says it brings it to the perfect temperature for him. So mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, you're ruining two drinks, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> to each his own, <laughs> right? Uh, William Joseph Roberts is saying good morning. Good morning. Um, so uh, today. We <laughs> we were going to talk a little bit about um, layout uh, and why a good layout is important. Uh, can you can you start diving into that a little bit? Me, yeah. Um, why it is important? Well, they say that uh, no one should judge a book by its cover, but everyone does, um, which is why covers are the most important thing when it comes to marketing your book. Um, but also, the interior is is I would argue. Maybe not equally as important to get eyes on your book right away, but if you want to hold people's attention and retain retain their attention, then yeah, your your light needs to be good because if it's all over the place, it isn't up to par. It's not of a professional standard, and people aren't going to stick around for long. Um, I know we had a little chat about this before. Um, it's maybe these days with print books or even ebooks, it's not so bad with things like vellum, um, and then there are other programs that are fairly easy to use. I think even Scrivener, you can fire out a very professional looking document with like too much hassle. But um, when it comes to uh, like pay, uh, picture books or tabletop RPG books as well, it could be a lot more involved because you know, you're know you doing the layout from scratch and there's a lot of pictures and graphics and other bits and pieces involved. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's it may not be as important as a cover, but it's definitely up there, I think. So here's an it, oh, wrong button. Uh, here is an example of uh, something of a layout. Uh, when you're talking RPG layout, uh, like you were saying, um, it gets very intense. So this is uh, Champions of the Electric Cube War, which uh, we just completed for uh, Fainting Goat Games. Uh, kind of like you know, uh, in keeping with the uh, the newest thing on. Uh, 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 can you guys? <laughs> I gotta find out who this is. <laughs> Can you please do an accent rap battle sometimes, please? This has got to be John Gibbons. He's from he's from your side of the uh, your side of the pond. 
I think Lauren Moore said that. Is it? Oh my yeah, God. That's, yeah. that's brilliant. <laughs> Lauren, we love you. Um, That'll have to be the next video. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, I can, uh, my family's from, uh, my mother's side of the family is from Sicily. So um, right now I'm actually faking my accent. Right, because mm -hmm. when I was when I was very young, I went through speech therapy to eradicate my accent, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so so yeah, I'm heavily faking this one. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we should uh, do. Uh, I guess we could do an, an Irish versus an Italian accent, um, or even better, this is this would be awesome if you faked an Italian accent and I faked an <laughs> Irish accent and went to town. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I'm game for that. Yeah, to see good. how original we could get it. Uh, <laughs> I've been told by several people I should never try to imitate a British accent ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume my Irish would be just that bad. Uh, but getting back to layout, this is um, this is a pretty clean layout that we did for Fainting Goat Games. Um, and uh, as far as RPG layouts go, it was pretty simple because the the customer wanted. Um, wanted uh, a single column layout, which is very, very easy to lay out. I mean, then you just got to decide whether you want all of your text justified, but you know, you line up all the pretty pictures and, and then you go for broke. Um, uh, and between the, uh, the streaming and the program right now, my computer is having minor lag, but um, you know, you kind of line everything up, you make it look pretty and you make it, uh, you know, so that every page, uh, says something to the reader more than just the text on the page um, where oh, I need to remove the epic rack battle. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, in a double page layout uh, or excuse me, a double, a double column layout, it can get even more complicated because then um, you're dealing with um, breaking up sections of text and having to wrap it around those images. Uh, so like in, in role playing game or uh, even something like uh, the illustrated Lord, Lord of the Rings books, where they heavily peppered the text with uh, these beautiful paintings. Uh, I have one down. I have one of the Hobbit uh, down on my bookshelf. It's like gold leaf trim on the outside. Um, beautiful wow. dust jacket. Uh, beautiful illustrations throughout. I mean, uh, whoever put this together um, was just was just an artist in every sense of the word. And every time you turn a page where there's an illustration, it enhances the text but not takes away from the text. So that's uh, um that's pretty cool uh william joseph wants to know from glasgow or belfast i can't place the accent <laughs> from belfast actually <laughs> but well done that was pretty that was pretty good <laughs> yeah uh, he gets the uh, the keystroke medium uh golf clap of approval yeah, for that one definitely because uh, i'm also faking my accent a little bit too yeah, <laughs> it so people people can sort of understand what i'm saying <laughs> right on right on uh i wonder if he can figure out where uh what part of the united states i'm from that would be interesting. Get extra points for that. We put a magnet on the fridge for him. Um, but yeah, you really want that layout to be clean. You really want it to be, um, you really want uh, when, an, when an image hits the page that doesn't detract from what you're reading, it, it kind of enhances it. Um, what, do you, what do you think about that, looking at some of the RPG stuff that you've seen in the last few uh, years and months? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it, the, the layout, it, it, it's how it draws the eyes, really. Um, and, uh, you know, it has to be really clean. Sometimes I've seen um, some kind of like homebrew or uh, stuff that maybe wasn't thought, as thought out as well, or maybe they didn't use um, someone who did it professionally or had, had a lot of experience in doing layouts. And, you know, maybe they tried to cram a little bit too much onto a page and your eye didn't know where to go, or um, maybe the text just the tax to image ratio was a little bit off or it's just things weren't aligned correctly and it does have it does impact um your experience and that's, that's what it's about all the day is ensuring that the reader's experience or you know the player's experience whatever, whatever product you're putting out there that it's as good as it can be and something i was i've been thinking about recently i don't know what you think about this is I, because I'm always coming from things from a marketing point of view, you know, when I'm thinking of, of publishing novels, I'm thinking, right, well, you know, you want to have a cover that is speaks to the genre. So if you're writing a science fiction novel, you want to, to write something that science fiction readers are going to be familiar with, because otherwise, you know, you want to be a, a little, just, just different enough to stand out, but not too different that it doesn't look like the same genre and put people off. Um, and I was thinking, you know, do you do something similar with interiors? Um, if, if you're going to market your product, um, for example, I'm working on a supplement for 5th um, edition of Dungeons & Dragons, um, probably not the, 
the most popular guy around because I'm doing that, but oh well. <laughs> um, so I I was thinking, you know, well, do I need to make it the stylization, etc., the layout? Do I need to make it similar to what Wizards of the Coast would use? Obviously, you can't use their same style because then you're infringing on certain things. But you know, do you need to think about certain elements of the design when it comes to that because you want it to resonate with um, those people and so the people you're trying to sell your product to? Yeah, it can get uh, kind of strange, and I apologize uh, for the squeaking. I have a, a cat who's uh, <laughs> who's uh, playing bagpipes in the back. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it really depends on on uh, a lot of times the layout artist uh, what he's comfortable with and what um, his style is, what style has developed from his experience. Um, I know um, uh, recently I've had several books. Uh, James McCormick saying sups up. Um, uh, I've had several books, uh, uh, novels, uh, that are going into layout right now. And, you know, you, you get them back and you see how, you know, when you're, when you're typing, uh, when you're typing, you're just typing, you know, putting mm -hmm. things together, blah, blah, blah. You know, one chapter might end a little weird, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, then when you see it back as a, a collected work, um, you see where, you know, one chapter will end and another one will pick up, um, text flow, uh, whether or not they've justified, uh, right, left, or um, or forced, where everything is lined up to the exact margins of the of the piece. You know, um, headings are also very interesting. Um, when uh, I got to read uh, uh, beta read um, uh, the first uh, Galaxy's Edge Dark Operator uh, novel, um, it was just basically a text file just sent. You know, and and. Uh, paragraphs were sep I mean, uh, excuse me, chapters were separated by numbers and it was very easy and so forth and so on. Uh, but then when you look at like the finished piece, they had like the Legion sword and crest in between, um, you know, breaks and, and and denoting chapter breaks and, and breaks within chapters and, and, you know, different points of view changes. So, I mean, that was kind of neat to see that like peppered throughout and it was really nice. And just like in the, uh, the Lord of the Rings book I was talking about earlier, um, uh, chapter headings had this very cool uh, filigree uh, so that you knew when a new chapter was coming up. Once again, art being used to uh, to detail um, uh, the text versus uh, to detract or pull your attention away from the text. Um, another thing that is uh, really uh, can really fluster some people are covers. Um, so, for example, um, here's an example of an 11 and a half, uh, eight and a half by 11 cover. So, most standard RPG books are set to this size. Um, uh, you know, you also get six by nine. You know, but a lot of people, when they're when they're ordering art for their cover, um, you know, especially if it's somebody who's never worked on a cover before, but their art might be absolutely amazing. Um, you, uh, a lot of times, they forget about this blue area up here, which is the bleed. You know, um, this is, you know, you see these little tick marks that are down on the bottom and those tick marks uh, denote where the cover is going to be cut by the uh, by the printer, you know, to to shave down uh, excess cardboard and stuff like that. You know, these lines down, whoop, we'll hide that. These lines down here denote uh, where the press is going to hit to uh, indent the spine so that it fits and wraps uh, correctly around. And this is a uh, um, this is a soft cover. Uh, not a hardcover, um, which is uh, the, uh, the, what do you call it? The, um, uh, the pages are glued in. Uh, sometimes they're saddle stitched, but you don't really see that uh, with anything, usually less than 50 pages. Uh, but, you know, you have to factor in all of these different, these different pieces. You know, this, this center pink is going to be something where you might put uh, the name of the, the work and then the author's name because it might stick out on a shelf that way. You know, so cover layout is is another huge part of layout to where, you know, there are a lot of factors involved in, and you want to uh, denote all those different factors and make sure that you're 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 focusing on how you you play all of these pieces into the puzzle, because if you miss a piece, something goes wrong, you know, you might have to work entire sections of a layout all over again. You know, um, have you had to play with any of that? Um, but to cons yeah, yeah, uh, I, I've had to do a few layouts as examples. Like I'm definitely by no means, 
a professional layout artist or anything. I, I mean, I know how to use InDesign and Illustrator and, and the full, full Adobe Suite because that's my background. Um, but I've had things happen where you know I'm in the middle of a project and we worked out a layout because we try to get a little bit ahead to get a jump start on things, and then um, it turns out that oh, we, we want to add a you know this page in or this chapter, and you have to cut that in, and then you know you have to redo everything afterwards. Um, but I haven't really had it where you know ha happened later on. Um, it didn't cr crop up as an issue in um, uh, further down the production level. That's mainly because I haven't really been doing it long enough. I'm sure that I would run into those problems um, sooner or later. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's interesting you bring up the cover side of things because when I think of layout, I automatically think of the interior. I don't even I, I don't even th I think that's probably just because. It comes from because I come from the indie novel publishing background, where you just get the stuff from the artist and you slap it on. You know, the program does it for you in KDP or whatever. Whereas, obviously, with um, tabletop RPGs, it's it's a lot more involved, like you mentioned. Yeah, and that, that cover is also such a huge thing because um, uh, most tabletop RPGs that are published these days uh, will end up running through drive through RPG at some point. Not necessarily all the time, but, you know, for a good chunk of it. Uh, and they use uh, Ingram Spark Lightning Source for mm -hmm. their um, for their printer, and they are very particular mm -hmm. in how you submit for not only... Um, um, they're covered, but for also um, for print. So their printer uses very specific color guidelines. And if you're not within those guidelines, they will kick you back again and again and again. And the same thing when you go to print for a uh, page layout, you know, they tell you right off the bat, if you're doing an eight and a half by 11, you need an extra 0.25 of an inch on all outside three corners to mm -hmm. facilitate that bleed and that cut that they're going to need to do. So you have to set up your pages ahead of time and uh, say you have a client that says, you know, hey, I want my PDF to look like every page is just dead center on and there's no variation from right to left to right to left because, you know, I just want it to be a clean read. And then, you know, as a layout artist, you go to that same person later and when they ask for a print, uh, you say, okay, well, I have to charge you for a second layout. And they look at you and they're like, what do you mean you have to do that? And it's like, well, now I have to offset the pages so that they can be properly sit in a binding. What you asked for was was center press. Yeah. I said, that does not include a print. You, I need to do this from scratch again. And they're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so like as a, uh, I've probably laid out about 50 or 60 products now. Hmm. Um, and uh, the biggest questions I see in, in role playing game layout um, how can I make, how can I get the most out of my art? Um, how can I get the most out of my text and my, um, my, uh, so that it just doesn't look like walls of text? Hmm. Uh, and, um, how fast can you get it to me? <laughs> 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 what, what about you? Well, uh, in, in playing with layouts, uh, what kind of questions have you come across? Um, I haven't really done enough to come across any issues with other people, um, but mainly, um, yeah, it would just be for myself because I the projects. We're running a very small press called Patty Dragon for some of the newer products that we're coming out with in terms of tabletop RPG. Did you say Patty Dragon? A Penny Dragon. <laughs> oh, Penny Dragon. Penny Dragon, I yeah. Say, I was going to say, both of those are cool. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Sometimes my wife might say that I am a bit of a dragon, but no, I think she's more of a dragon than I am, to be honest. <laughs> but that's another story for another day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, because it's... it's I work with a few people in, in terms of making the decisions for what goes into the book and the layouts and, and that regard. And it's like sometimes that people have different ideas um, as to what, like what, one of the guys I do with the lead designers with me, we kind of both design the stuff together. And he may have different ideas as to how things, you know, he, he wants things to be in the design of the game itself or the, the content or the writing. 
but that doesn't always work with the layout itself. So you kind of have to, again, come up with a compromise and, and say, well, um, yeah, th th this sounds really nice for this particular piece of text, but it's going to look terrible because it's just like a whole page of text. And you, you might need a table here or a little you know, excerpt of a um, uh, some sort of uh, we, we, one of the products we're working on it has a little bit of lore dotted here and there, you know, bits of torn parchment. You know, you can just throw those in and break things up a little bit. There are little tricks you can do, I suppose. Um, I'm still learning those as I go along. Um, I don't know. Are there any other tips or tricks that you could recommend that you, you're <laughs> experienced? <laughs> um, yeah, the the parchment thing is is nice, right? Um, Oh, excuse me. Um, one of the uh, one of the books that we did um, in association with uh, Stone Mountain Games is called Search and Destroy, um, and it was uh, directly created from um, the Supers uh, license, in which we own. We own uh, the role playing game Supers, and uh, one of the things they did that was really cool that I really enjoyed, and it, I, you know, first of all, the John Gibbons artwork in this is just sublime. I mean to the point where you're just, you know, it's just eye candy everywhere you, every time you get to a piece of his art. But beyond that, there are just these little blurbs here and there. Uh, let's see if I can find, oh. Um, so uh, a nightmare. Uh, so right here, you have this just like, this little text box, just kind of uh, this frame of text that are just kind of breaking things up. And it's a, it's a line from the movie Taken. You know, but what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. You know, and that's from Brian Mills Taken. So yeah, that parchment where you got like, you know, pits of history or a quote, uh, those are nice uh, to break up uh, text and stuff like that. Um, sometimes something as simple as this, like a top secret uh, logo in between a, a bunch of text and stuff like that. Not necessarily full blown art, but you know something that is graphically enhancing uh, the uh, the text itself, so that it's not just mountain of read. You know, because uh, a lot of times in these RPG books, um, you, you know, you, you need something to break up that that text because people start to glaze over. Whereas in a novel, you want those those giant mountains of text because that's the whole reason you're there. Yeah. Um, you know, you got uh, um, uh, another good thing that you can do is uh, your headings. Uh, when you're putting in headings, uh, try and make them differentiated from the uh, uh, the rest of the text. You know, a different font or a different size, uh, maybe a graphic to go along with it to kind of like every time you get to a new chapter, somebody sees this graphic and is like, that's a new chapter. I know what's going on, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I totally agree, though. Um, the stylistic choice of somebody saying, uh, like, for example, uh, yes, we have this King Arthur in Camelot during the time of when that was all going on. We should use this very script old English text. And it, if you put that in a product and then print it, it looks like garbage because you get a headache yeah. trying to read it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's so tough. Uh, there was a RPG publisher recently I think it was in the last five years, um, they did a reprint of a book that they already had out and they used that very stylistic with all these crazy borders and there was all this leaf work. It looked very uh, 15th century and mm -hmm. it was hard to read. A lot of people didn't like it, you know, but, and now granted the artwork that they, that they selected, um, everything just looked amazing. But when you tried to read the book, it was very difficult. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, um, have you ever played the, or seen The One Ring? Um, yes. Yeah, yes. That's, gorgeous that's, books. It's beautiful. And I, I like just bringing out what you said there. What they did really well is they do use some of those really stylistic um, fonts, but they use it just, just for a heading that is like yes. one word, like um, a background or a culture. And it, it looks really nice. It's very tastefully done, but because it is big enough for you to, you know, you can tell clearly what it is. Whereas, yeah, I have seen that happen sometimes where they, they kind of just use it in the general text and you just can't make it in or fail. Yeah, it's, it, it's crazy. Um, uh, I think, um, you know, when you're, when you're doing, uh, I really would like to get, uh, I need to bug him now that he's no longer in the Navy. Uh, Drew Avery on here and and talk about because uh, he is a layout, layout artist for novels. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So if you need something laid out, he's the guy. Uh, he hmm. did uh, he did uh, one for us. Do I have it on my desktop? 
uh, I'll look while I'm, you know, spewing. Um, he did one for us and it was, just, it was very well done. Um, hit all the right, hit all the right uh, points made uh, the chapters look good. Uh, it was, you know, everything was lined up when something ended, you knew it ended, you knew where the new chapters began. So, um, yeah, if you need uh, you need layout work for a novel, please mm -hmm. seek that guy out because um, otherwise he's going to keep playing guitar on Facebook. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's he's so, such good people, so easy to work with, very affordable, especially if you're a first time writer and you're just trying to you know you're just trying to get that first uh, release to market, and uh, you want somebody who knows what they're doing and is going to put a lot of hard work with uh, plenty of back and forth uh so that you're not gonna look at it when it's done and go oh did i uh did i get what i paid for you know mm -hmm. he's he's good people so i mean uh yeah definitely seek him out and he is uh he, he's he bounces here and there on keystroke medium uh, occasionally so uh not so much now that he's you know like i said out of the navy um uh what do retired navy people do i wonder i, I don't know um but yeah, uh, if you if you want to know, uh, his last name is spelled A V E R A, um, and he also has uh, an, his own Facebook uh, group for just the formatting, which is uh, Drew A Avery. Like I said, A V E R A, uh, and then it, the word formatting afterwards. So if you want to find him that way, we'll put all these links in the show afterwards uh, so that people could find it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to bug him now. So if I get him on on another coffee and concepts, and he's military, he'll he'll get up early. Um, would you want to come on and uh, pick his brain for that side too? Yeah, I'd love to. Oh, that'd be perfect. Um, so if people want to stalk you on the internet, uh, where's a good place to find you? Um, you can find me. I think the best place uh, you can have me as a friend. Um, if you look up Paddy Finn on Facebook, you'll find me. I write under Killian Carter. For my novels, um, kccarter.com is the website for that. And what kind of novels do you write, pray tell? Uh, science fiction, a um, little bit of military, but it's mainly adventure, space opera type stuff. Um, oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, I, I, I've got a, a the third book in a series launched a while ago. Um, well, not so long ago, actually. Uh, it's a, The Galactic Sentinels, the name of the series. Um, it, it's sort of like it's Mass Effect. If Mass Effect and... Um, Star Wars had a one night stand is how I market it. Um, so it's got, it's got a little bit, because I'm not a military guy, I can't right you know, I feel funny about putting too much of it in. Um, uh, and it, uh, that was my first series as well. So it's, it's not great, but I'm, I'm working on another one at the minute um, called Max Miller. It's like a private investigator. He goes around the, the solar system. It's kind of like more near future, um, a couple of hundred years in the future rather than thousands of years. And he kind of like goes from planet to planet solving crimes with his German shepherd. Um, and that's going to be, those books will be much, much better because I have the best editor. Oh, you can only see his butt. Oh, that's uh, Hello. <laughs> What's his name? I should know this. Uh, yeah, Balder. Um, Balder. He was, uh, he was actually made famous in the Galaxy's Edge book. Um, uh, excuse me, Madame Guillotine. Um, oh, yeah. Where he shows up and uh, uh, becomes somebody's buddy. And cool. leave, leaves me behind. <laughs> well, there's nothing like having a having a dog in a book. Yeah, you know my seventy pound furry chainsaw. Um, yeah, <laughs> all gophers beware. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so we're definitely gonna have him on, or, or less, uh, or I'm gonna have to bribe him on. Uh, he's a yeah. sailor. I have to, ma I'll have to make like sludge coffee to get him on. Um, so <laughs> the, dr um, the dregs at the bottom of. The oh my god, <laughs> I've I've had some bad coffee, and I thought the Marines were bad, but uh, I had some like uh, midnight rats, uh, midnight rations on a ship once, and mm -hmm. and I was just like. Why, why, why did was this coffee made in World War Two? <laughs> you know, <laughs> took it to a whole new level. <laughs> wow, you know, now, now great. Nope, another country heard from. Go get them. So, oh boy. Uh, on that note, <laughs> uh, can people go to um, Amazon and find your uh, find your books? Yeah, they'll find it on Amazon. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna. Say so the the next uh, the next series of books that are releasing in the next few months are, are so much better because I have the best editor on the planet. Um, Who's that? Alan Campbell. Yes. <laughs> 
Although, yeah, she's one of the best on the planet because she's 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 like a machine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about framing the edit she did for for me on a short story, mm -hmm. just because I felt I felt really at home, almost like the drill sergeant was throwing a trash can around <laughs> the room. I know. I was like, I like I said, I'm not a military guy, but I felt like you know I was at boot camp or something when I was reading through my editor's notes. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's she's she does really good work. Yeah. Right. But uh yeah. yeah, you you need to be able to take some of the lessons because she's mm -hmm. gonna give them and mm -hmm. and and I, I I really haven't found instances where she's really a lot wrong. So I mean no, no. Yeah. yeah she, you need she, you need a thick skin with Ellen. She doesn't beat about the bush, but that is, you know, where she brings I don't know, that's that's what I what I value in an editor. Yeah. I, I've worked with a few editors in the past, and you know some of them have been great, but some of them have maybe beaten about the bush a little bit too much. And it's like, well, I, I can see maybe some other authors want that they look like a little bit more um, ear tickling or whatever. But I'm like, no, just tell me what I need to do and say what you need to say, and I'll do it. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's like punch me in the face and call me Nancy. Tell me what I did wrong. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's fantastic. And the next book in you, uh, that you have coming out uh, uh, is going to be when? It'll be in October. Um, it's the Lunar Express. So it's kind of like the first. This guy, Max Miller, does not want to go into space, but he <laughs> ends up he ends up going to the moon anyway <laughs> on this space elevator type thing called the Lunar Express. So yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna have to look for it. When you get ready to release, will you come back on and talk about the book? Yeah, sure thing. I'd love to. That is fantastic. All right, here's where we get the good stuff and see how good I can mesmerize and memorize. So uh, Mondays, we have Josh, Scott, and Chuck doing Keystroke Medium Live. We just wanted to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you for the 1,000 subscribers that have come in and made this community. Uh, we've got some good things coming up, so make sure you keep checking in. Hit that bell like and subscribe so that uh, you can catch all the content when it hits and we can bring even more and enriched content to you in the future. Of course, uh, Coffee and Concepts normally on a Tuesday, but you know something? We will chase authors where they sleep and uh, we will wake them up so with tons of coffee and we'll talk about uh, a little bit of uh, uh, caffeinated bean and then uh, in between the lines on Thursday. Normally we have the writer's journey. They are on hiatus, very sad, until uh, September. Uh, but their normal shtick is to pull in people who know about the thing that you need to know as a newer writer and uh, developing your craft of writing if you're an experienced writer. Um, Josh Caillou on YouTube does long form uh, interviews where they pick apart a subject uh, over a couple of hours and really dive deep into the meat of the matter. Um, Thanks you for everybody who hung out and had some coffee with us this morning. Patty, thank you again for coming out. That was fun. Thanks for having me. Cheers. And uh, we'll catch you next time for reading, writing, a little bit more, especially with uh, you know my dog going mental on Keystroke <laughs> Medium. Thank you. Ciao.